Now next we will discuss about liver trauma. Now liver is the most common organ injured in blunt trauma abdomen. So let us discuss liver trauma. Now liver is the most common organ injured during blunt trauma abdomen. Now next let us discuss the indications of surgical intervention in a case of liver trauma. So what are the indications of surgical interventions? So first is if there is progressive deterioration of the patient that means if the patient becomes hemodynamically unstable that in the, then in that case we have to go for surgical intervention. So in cases of progressive 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 deterioration progressive deterioration of patient after that in case of continuous bleeding now next important indication is grade 5 injury on ct scan so grade 5 grade 5 injury on ct scan After that, if there is any suspicion of associated bowel injury, then we have to go for surgical intervention. So, in cases of associated bowel injury, clear? Okay. Next, let us discuss the clinical features in a case of liver trauma. So, what are the clinical features? Now, you see. In cases of liver trauma, what happens? There is massive bleeding. So the patient will be in stage of shock. There will be pallor and patient will be in hypovolemic shock. So patient will be having features of shock. There will be pallor, hypotension, then tachycardia. Clear? Now, if we see the abdominal examination, there will be abdominal distension with dullness in the flanks. So, per abdomen, we will find abdomen will be distended with dull flanks. Clear? After that, the patient will have tenderness, guarding and rigidity. The patient will have, there will be tenderness. guarding and rigidity the patient will have features of tachypnea and respiratory distress Clear? now if there is associated bile duct injury what will happen the bile will leak into the peritoneal cavity and patient may have features of biliary peritonitis so in case of bile leak Patient may have features of biliary peritonitis. Clear? Now let us discuss the CT grading of liver injury. Now next we will discuss about CT grading. Clear? Now we have grade, grade 1, which includes hematoma. or laceration now this grade 1 it includes subcapsular hematoma involving less than 10% of surface area or there can be a capsular laceration of less than 1 cm in depth so it is grade 1 after that we have grade 2 again there is hematoma laceration now in hematoma we have a subcapsular hematoma Involving 10 to 50% of surface area and 
it is intraparenchymal less than 10 cm in diameter and a capsular laceration of 1 to 3 cm in depth and less than 10 cm in length clear after that we have grade 3 so grade 3 it involves hematoma which is a subcapsular hematoma subcapsular hematoma involving more than 50% more than 50% and it is intraparenchymal with more than 10 cm diameter and please remember it is expanding type of hematoma so it is expanding type of hematoma clear after that we have we have laceration and it is a capsular laceration capsular laceration of more than 3 cm depth then we have grade 4 In grade 4, we have a laceration. It is a parenchymal, parenchymal disruption involving 25 to 75 percent of hepatic lobe, or you can say 1 to 3 quinoid segments. After that, we have grade 5. It includes laceration in which there is a parenchymal disruption. A parenchymal disruption of more than 75% or more than 3 quinoid segments. Clear? Now in grade 5, we have also vascular injury involving major hepatic veins or retro, retro hepatic vena cava injuries. So we have vascular injuries involving major hepatic veins or retrohepatic vena cava injuries. Now next we have grade 6. Grade 6 it is a vascular injury in which there is complete hepatic avulsion. So this was the grading of liver injury on a CT scan. Now next let us discuss the diagnosis part. Clear. Now, the first investigation to be done is ultrasound fast. And after that, what is the investigation of choice in a case of liver trauma? It is CT chest and CT abdomen. So, the first investigation done, it is ultrasound fast. After that, what is the investigation of choice? It is CT chest and CT abdomen. CT chest and CT abdomen. Clear. Now let us discuss the treatment part. Now, what we have to do first, we will have to resuscitate the patients, give IV fluids. IV fluids are given. Blood transfusion may be required along with FFPs. Then, what we will do? Catheterization is done. Urinary bladder catheterization. Why? In order to measure the urinary output, to measure the urine output. Clear? Now, what are the indications of conservative management in a case of liver trauma? Let us discuss it. Now, what are the indications of conservative management? 
so indications of conservative management Now, if there is a hemodynamically stable patient with no peritoneal signs, then we can go for conservative management. So, first indication is hemodynamically, hemodynamically stable patient with no peritoneal signs. After that, Second indication is if there is low grade of liver injury on CT scan that is grade 1 to grade 3 liver injury. So grade 1 to 3 liver injury. Clear? Now another indication is if there is absence of extravasation of contrast in the arterial phase of CT scan. So third indication is absence of extravasation contrast during arterial phase clear so these were the indications of conservative management in a case of liver injury now please remember one important point that the success rate of non-operative management in grade 1 to grade 3 patients it is 85 percent and the success rate of non-operative management in grade 4 to grade 6 it is 40 percent now if at any time condition of the patient worsens then we have to go for surgical intervention that is we have to go for exploratory laparotomy so if it at any case if condition worsens if condition worsens then we have to go for laparotomy clear now what does this conservative management in the case of liver injury it includes it includes icu care for three to five days after that you have to repeat the ct scan on fifth day so repeat CT scan on fifth day. Bed rest is to be continued. After that, when the patient is discharged, he is advised that he can resume normal activity only after three months. So, to resume normal activity only after three months. Now it has been found that angiographic embolization it increases the outcome of this non-operative management. So angiographic embolization, angiographic embolization, it increases the outcome or it increases the success rate of non-operative management. After that, let us discuss the various indications of surgical intervention in a case of liver trauma. So, what are the indications of surgical management? So, first indication is, I told you that if patient is hemodynamically stable or if there are no peritoneal signs, then we can go for conservative management. But if the patient is hemodynamically unstable or if the patient has peritoneal signs, then we have to go for surgical intervention. So first indication is hemodynamically unstable patient. Hemodynamically unstable patient. Clear? Now if there is grade 5 injury on CT scan, then you have to go for surgical intervention. Or if there is any associated bowel injury, then in that case also you have to go for surgical intervention. So in cases of grade 5 liver injury on CT scan or associated bowel injury Now in the surgical management of liver trauma we go for 
what is called as damage control surgery so this damage control surgery it is done in three phases so have a look next we will discuss about damage control damage control surgery in a case of liver trauma i told you it consists of three phases now phase one it includes laparotomy now the aim of phase one is you have to control the bleeding by various methods so after laparotomy we have to control the bleeding so after laparotomy what we have to do we have to control the bleeding control the bleeding now the various methods by which the bleeding can be controlled one is by direct compression and another one is pringles manure now what are the methods we have direct compression then we have pringles manure now in this pringles manure what we do the bleeding is controlled by applying pressure over the foramen of winslow and as a result of which the bleeding from the hepatic and the portal vessels they are controlled so in pringles manure what we do we control the on table bleeding from hepatic artery and portal vein so what we do we apply compression over foramen of winslow foramen of winslow clear either by direct compression by direct compression using bulldog clamps or vascular clamps another important method is by direct placing the packs by placing the packs now after that we have phase 2 now phase second in phase second what we have to do in phase second you have to do the resuscitation and correction of various metabolic abnormalities so we have resuscitation with management of metabolic abnormalities metabolic abnormalities that means we have to go for ICU care of the patient. Now, what are the various metabolic abnormalities? That is hypothermia, temperature of less than 34 degrees Celsius, then coagulopathy. After that, these patients, they suffer from acidosis. Now, in phase 2, we have to give intensive care to the patient clear now next we have phase 3 in phase 3 what we do we go for re-exploration and definitive treatment now next we have phase 3 in phase 3 what we go we go for re-exploration and definitive procedure which may include reconstruction re-suturing suturing of the vessels and these may include a reconstruction or a resection then suturing and a reconstruction of major vessels Now sometimes the question is asked what is the name of incision which is given in cases of laparotomy in case of liver trauma we give a bucket handle incision so a bucket handle incision is given bucket handle incision now there is an important term which is termed as mesh hepatography mesh hepatography means we enclose the liver in an absorbable mesh so as to achieve the hemostasis so what is mesh hepatography mesh hepatography 
in this what is done in this liver is wrapped wrapped in absorbable mesh to achieve hemostasis now in some cases if there is associated inferior vena cava injury it is very difficult to manage so in that case what we do we go for a veno venous bypass graft and in in that condition what we do we do a bypass is done between the femoral vein and the superior vena cava and later on the inferior vena cava is repaired so in cases of ivc injury if there is associated associated ivc injury what we do a veno venous bypass graft is done between femoral vein and superior vena cava and later on what we do later on the ivc is repaired clear now there is an important one liner which is sometimes asked in the exam what is the needle which is used to repair the liver laceration it is cause nets of aluminium needle clear now next let us discuss the sequelae or complications of liver injury so next we will discuss complications or sequelae of liver injury now first is that it can turn into a liver hematoma can turn into an abscess a subphrenic abscess there can be a liver abscess a subphrenic abscess or a pelvic abscess after that in some conditions if there is bile leak it can lead to a bile leak can lead to biliary peritonitis so biliary peritonitis now sometimes there is hepatic artery aneurysm and it can lead to arteriovenous or arteriobiliary fistula which can result in hemobilia clear so there can be a hemobilia formation after that there can be intrahepatic hematoma sometimes there can be a cbd structure if there is associated cbd injury which can lead to obstructive jaundice after that you see in such patients we have to give massive blood transfusion so the patient may suffer from complications of massive blood transfusion now i told you these patients they suffer from electrolyte imbalance the patient may have coagulopathies then there can be respiratory complications after that in some cases there can be liver failure and if there is massive hemorrhage patient may be in a state of shock so shock due to massive hemorrhage so this was all about liver trauma